So hello everybody, hello Mira. Thanks a lot for, for having me. My name is Mark Eichhorst. I worked in, I started working with Oracle Tools in the early 90s. It was a time of Form 3 reports, Oracle Case, Database 6.0, and I spent a lot of time uh, in building an ERP system for the food industry, um, and which is still is running on Oracle Technology. So the Oracle Technology stack accompanied me through my entire career. And um, well, as you can hear, I'm not a native speaker, but I hope you can understand me well. And as Mary said, if you have questions, just put it in the Q&A and uh, we try to answer them at the end of the session. So looking what uh, what is the plan for the next 45 minutes, I will start with a brief overview of the state of Oracle Forms and the motivation uh, to add or to migrate to Oracle Apex. Then we will have a quick look at Apex architecture, not too detailed because there's a lot of stuff on the internet available, but just have a brief overview. And also I will show you our general project approach uh, when we start a migration project. And the most of the time we will spend in, uh, in sharing some experience from um, migrations and uh, added functionality. <clears throat> I will end up in a summary and then we come to questions and answers. So about the motivation. Um, I think it's fair if we talk about replacing forms or adding functionality forms, look also to forms itself. And um, at the moment we are in a supported environment in the version 12C until the end of 2026. But for next year also new releases planned. It's the 14 of the fusion middleware, which should be also cover forms and reports. And um, having said that, with that release, there comes also a period of, of five years uh, premier support. So from a uh, support point of view, we have no pressure and we have um, also for the coming years a uh, still supported forms environment. However, can we solve everything with Oracle forms or can't we? And um, especially on some points, we miss functionality as, as forms developers. For me, it's always pretty hard to build a really intuitive user interface for people who are experienced in web, uh, in web interfaces and web applications. Um, with the digitalization, there comes also more and more need uh, to use mobile devices, uh, tablets, cell phones, use a camera for barcode uh, scanning, use touchpad screens. Uh, GPS coordinations and to have a responsive design for different devices. When you think about B2B or so users outside the company, it's always a bit hard with forms yeah, because normally they just want to open a web application in the browser and no software uh, deployed on their devices. Oracle, as I said before, we have uh, um, releases coming. Um, but the period is uh, it's, uh, quite a long time, I think. Uh, it, um, from compared with Apex, we have in Apex two releases every year, and uh, in Apex they pick up pretty fast um, new database features and, and possibilities and within forms. We are always a bit behind the schedule, so to say. Um, also, in forms it's pretty hard to um, exchange components. Uh, uh, with an Apex, we can participate a lot of, of others in, in the community. I think that is one of the strongest parts from Apex. It is also possible to share um, to share achievements and uh, not to reinvent the wheel for everybody. And last but not least, um, the forms developer get older and older, and it is uh, pretty hard to um, yeah to get young people in this technology. Um, that we have at least uh, much better uh, experiences with uh, web applications to yeah to get young people committed to web applications instead of forms. So looking pretty briefly to what is Apex, and I I captured some slides from Oracle. It's a bit advertising, but uh, nevertheless. Uh, um, it looks good when Oracle says, well, with Apex you can build scalable, uh, secure enterprise apps, world-class features, and can deploy it everywhere. And it is uh, 
Yeah, partly that's absolutely right. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of Apex. I cannot say it here. <laughs> um, it is advertising, but uh, it is also uh, uh, not a lie. And uh, when I look to the characteristics of Apex, for me the most uh, beneficial thing of Apex that is everything is in the database. So the business logic has direct access to the data without involving object relational layers and, and uh, to data transfer to the mid tier. So everything can be processed in the database and it is uh, pretty fast. Also, Oracle Apex uh, is a low code uh, tool. So it allows you to, um, to, to program applications by declarations and uh, by low coding. Um, one of the biggest game changer here is that in Apex, <clears throat> you can also dive very deep yeah, and uh, um, you can program things in JavaScript, extend the framework. And this is really a uh, very different to other products like uh, Microsoft Power Apps or Google Sheet Web Apps, um, where you have just a framework and can't extend it. And with Oracle Apex, um, can do a lot of stuff and extend the framework. It is not just uh, no code or low code. Um, Looking a bit outside from, from Gardner, um, they have every year election. What is uh, uh, the peer inside the tool of the year from the customer point of view and in the um, area of low coding, coding uh, uh, tools? tools? Sorry, I found Sorry, echo. I echo. I hope it's fixed it. Ah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, yeah, go on. Okay. In the area of low coding tools, uh, Apex was. Uh, the last year's the, the tool of the choose uh, um, of customer choose. Um, to see it also from another perspective, I think that's a bit tricky to explain. But there's also some kind of metric uh, quadrat from from Gardner where they rank tools in the context of um, ability to execute and and the vision. And normally I would expect Oracle in the right upper corner to be one of the leaders, but it is in the challenging in the challenges uh, area. And uh, when I think a couple of times about it, I, I can also understand that because Oracle was not very clear about the vision of this tool. So Oracle uh, invented UIX, ADF, uh, chat, Visual Builder Cloud Service, and there's been a lot of options and not a, a really um, a clear direction what is the best uh, tool or the fitting tool for for data centric developments but it is going to change and already it changed uh, um, in the meanwhile the oracle team got around 100 uh, 100 people 100 developers and also larry ellison was quite impressed regarding apex um, when they built uh, the covid 19 therapeutic apps uh, uh, it's a nice story you can google it on the internet uh, in in a couple of weeks, they uh, made the application from design to roll out in a secure environment. Um, so it's really a good example how quick you can develop applications with Apex. So just a couple of technical aspects. At the first few, well, Oracle Apex is a three-tier application that uh, looks pretty much the same as Oracle Forms. However, like said before, um, a lot of stuff happening in the database tier and, uh, and the mid tier is easy said it's just a dispatcher of HTTP requests to a pool of database sessions. So that's the difference a bit to Oracle Forms where the Forms runtime is in the mid tier. Um, that's just for the overview, but this um, also have some consequences. When I look to differences between forms and Apex, and just to show you one example, is about the, the locking strategy. Oracle Forms is a pessimistic locking by default. So 
if a user wants to change a record, normally um, it starts with a select for update. If the record is in lock by another user, there comes a pop up. Um, you can retry it uh, to to up uh, to to lock it for update. Then, when you get the record, you can change the data, and when you're finished, you commit a rollback, um, and it is done. In Apex, there's an optimistic locking implemented. That means the user can change the data, and when he decides to save the data in the database, uh, then a small transaction is executed where the record is, tr is locked, where the data is compared and, and committed. Yeah? However, in the data comparison, if there's a difference in the data, you get an error message that the data has been changed in between. So this is all no, um, no issue, no problem, but you have to be aware of it, how it works. Yeah? That informs you have an, say, an open database transaction, and due to Apex is a stateless tool, uh, you have no open transaction in the database. And if you make a form where hundreds of items, or, or say uh, 20, 30 icons are in, items are in, and the user fills it out, and the end you get an error message, that's probably not what he expects. Um, so you have to just be aware of it that there are some differences in the behavior. When we want to yeah, combine forms in Apex, we have also to look about the integration possibilities and the action possibilities. From Oracle Forms, it's uh, pretty simple. We can use the web show document uh, built in to start a URL where Apex is called. If you have Oracle Access Manager or on Kerberos based authentication, you can use uh, single sign on or other tools, no issues. Um, otherwise, you could also use the JSON web tokens to transfer some data, uh, which allows the, the login process in Apex uh, to connect to the same user in the database so that the user has no separate uh, login in Apex. Let's make it, make it a bit uh, more handy to change between forms and Apex uh, in a process. When we look to Apex, uh, we can also call a forms, um, a forms application uh, by custom protocol handlers. It's a bit more effort because you need to change the registry debt on the um, on the client. Um, this uh, as a, in the version uh, 12 to 119, it is supported and documented. It is also possible with older forms versions. Um, you just tell the client that if uh, F-cell, for example, is used, that he opens uh, forms. It uh, works uh, pretty well. If you're running a forms session in the Apex session, there's also uh, some possibilities to exchange data to, to react on the events on the other side, so to say. Um, the easy stuff is to have some database objects where you share data, use advanced queuing, um, and if you share things more on the client side, you can also use the web sockets and the JavaScript integration between forms and Apex. So let's share first uh, experience of a, of a project. Uh, it was for um, an international group of um, energy generation and waste disposal. In the starting point, uh, was that we have an application, a central application running on, on uh, Oracle Forms. So it was an Oracle Forms 12C application. And beside that central application, uh, we had around 80 recycling centers. And in these recycling centers, Oracle Forms 6I um, version was still used, and then Oracle XE database. And the customer had some, some issues uh, to move this application uh, to a WebLogic server regarding the costs and the higher license costs. Um, and he decided he wants to, uh, to use Apex for the recycling centers. That was more or less our 
our starting point here. And when we look to the process in the recycling centers, it was the, the core process um, was uh, quite easy. It was just a weighing process. Every truck uh, is weighed twice, a full and the empty uh, weighing. And based on the different of these uh, weighings, the delivery was recorded. <clears throat> Org Reform 6i was uh, made use of an, a C library uh, to connect to the scales. And every document uh, was printed out, signed, scanned in, and sent to an archive system afterwards. So we had some issues here with support of Org Reform 6i and the not supported database. Uh, there was a data synchronization between the local and the central database, which uh, caused some issues and some delays. Software deployment was not easy on the AT recycling centers. Um, and the connection to the scales, yeah, it was a C library, and um, yeah, the source code was not um, not changeable, not, not there. Um, and we had some issues when the device has to be changed. Uh, it, was, it was a bit tricky to change the libraries. Also, the paper-based processes uh, cost a lot of additional effort, uh, printing and signing, scanning. So the requirements was to replace from 6i. They want to have an, a possibility also to use mobile devices or tablets uh, for the weighing process. Um, yeah, the, the rest was uh, already said, um, and they don't want to invest additional money for new application servers on, on the sites. One requirement, which is a bit tricky when, when we migrate uh, stuff to Apex, is that um, yeah, they ask for an, um, high recognition of factor for, for users. Yeah? They want us to have the screen more or less as the old screens huh? to um yeah the users have been quite happy with the screen all information was on it and uh, uh, they thought well the more it looks the new looks like the old uh, the easier is the rollout of the um, new application however when you when you look to a typical form screen uh, and that was the one uh, for, for the weighing process um, it's not always the best idea to rebuild it one to one. So in general, I favor to to make the screens a bit easier, less loaded, and use some wizards and, and stuff um, yeah, to guide the user a bit through the, the interface. Um, and in this case, this is uh, the Apex screen. It is also not the easiest, but it was possible Yeah, we used the full screen. Um, and the benefit here was that the rollout phase was was really easier. We offered online training for the users in the hundred locations, and um, more or less in in three months um, the whole rollout was done. And we had a very good uh, feedback for the the user from a web application for the especially from the young users. Uh, and the ones who have not spent uh, a lot of years on the Oracle forms, they have been quite happy, except of uh, except of one user. Yeah, one was really focused on the old stuff, and uh, uh, the lady had a hard time to to pick up the new ones. But the rest of the locations are really have been really happy and um, and picked it up good. Additional to this uh, desktop uh, here, we made also. Um, a mobile application, especially for the for the signing uh, process. So this is a, a small Apex uh, yeah, page. Maybe display the, the PDF report which is generated and which allows us to to sign the report and then the, the signatures also uh, migrated in the report. Um, the nice thing here is that the, the whole um, the whole signing, also what, what you see here, these two um, items, uh, the, we take them from a community plugin, so it was uh, more or less uh, with, without big development uh, possible to add here the possibility to, to sign the report. Mm. 
mal sehen, dass man predigt, äh, man, äh, man sehen, wie wir to do bevor was to transfer the, the business logic from forms uh, into the database, yeah, that we also can use it from Apex or from uh, the desktop and from the mobile um, application. Also, we change the communication to the scales um, from a serial communication with the C libraries to an uh, TCP IP port communication. So that allows us also to communicate with the scales from um, uh, Smartphone or from another device. So the realized situation is that we have still the, the forms application, which has a whole order management uh, solution as a, as a back office and a central back office. And we um, replace the form 6i application by Apex and uh, and we look a bit more detailed on the on the recycling centers. Um, we get rid of printing out the, the weighing documents about this, the signatures, electronical, the scanning is uh, not needed anymore. Um, and the responsive design made it possible yeah, to, to use a desktop or a tablet. And um, the next steps in this project is um, a kind of self-service uh, terminal um, where we also use Apex and uh, truck drivers have the possibility to deliver their goods outside uh, the working hours of the recycling uh, center. And one idea was also to start the weighing process then from the smartphone of the of the truck driver. So these uh, these change give us a lot of possibilities in that areas. Um, <laughs> well, going a bit more to 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 general things, um, how to get from forms to Apex. Um, yeah, most of the forms applications I know are very large monolithic systems which grows about uh, over these decades. <clears throat> and um, when we think about modernization, it's not a, a single option which covers all, so parts of the application could be covered by standard software, other parts. Uh, maybe the best fitting solution is to stay with forms. Um, for parts, we, we modernize by adding an Apex application next to the form, and uh, sometimes for some application or some parts, it makes sense to, to migrate them or, or redevelop or develop a new application. Um, so it is not a not a single uh, decision. Yeah, you you normally you um, slice a bit the old uh, monolithic application into parts and look what is the best uh, option. Um, this is well not good to read, but it is a bit our big picture about uh, migration projects. And um, the first block is about getting getting a vision or uh, define the scope of the um, of the migration project and also uh, get a first estimation about the, the efforts. Uh, and knowing that, we can then work on, on, a, on a roadmap for the realization and the realization itself. Uh, we prefer very much an agile way of working. So, an interactive, uh, iterative, so iterative approach. Um, with quick uh, customer feedbacks and uh, early a chance to achieve the business values very early. Looking a bit more in details to the uh, looking at more more in details. Um, <clears throat> yeah, one of the core one of the core um, activities is to investigate in the business logic. So. Um, how is the business logic fitting to the to the current processes? Is the data model okay? Is the data model uh, covering uh, what is needed? Also, we look uh, what are new requirements from, uh, for example, from digitalization or changing of the, of the processes. Are there strategic uh, goals for you know, make or buy decisions for parts of the application? If we have technical doubts. Um, it could be, it's always a good option then to, to run a proof of concept project. 
it's a kind of hardest first approach to get uh, quick feedback if the project is do if the project is doable or not. Also, sometimes a flagship approach, a flagship project helps us uh, to get the right attention from the business and also get some early feedback uh, from the user about the acceptance of, of the new system. One of the challenging points is always a bit the estimation, how much um, how much costs, how much work is it uh, to migrate an application? Um, let's look there a bit more detailed. There's also no silver bullet or no, no magic um, behind that. We have a lot of influence factors. Uh, so beside the new uh, needs, new uh, requirements, um, we use normally we use uh, tools like the Forms API Master to yeah to investigate in the um, in the current Forms application. So, for example, how many data blocks, how many items, how many program units or triggers are in. But even more interesting is uh, are there specialties like Java Beans or extensive use of WebUtil. Uh, yeah, for instance, OLE2 or other client-side integrations, um, which can be not one-to-one -one transferred uh, towards RPEX. Our approach is um, to yeah to build group of groups of mod modules, so um, easy like uh, T-shirt sizes. Um, so we find some. Um, some forms must who have the same same complexity, um, and that is uh, that is not not general. That depends really on your application. So, uh, application which has been generated from the Oracle designer is quite different uh, to an application which is uh, built manually, and even in in that applications, um, uh, all applications I've seen till now are, are quite uh, different in. In their um, um, yeah, way they they, they build. Um, but this is t-shirt sizes, and you can extend it to XS and XL. But in the end, you find some some group of model who are, um, who have some simil similarities, and um, then we estimate the effort for this group, um, and um, partly we make some some trials. Um, how much effort is it to uh, migrate these uh, forms towards Apex? And with certain numbers, we do a, a rough calculation. So huh? we take the number of modules in the group, um, the average uh, effort of a program, and we come to some summary. Additional to that, we need some <clears throat> some effort to build, to say, the framework or some specialities. Um, uh, from the application, but it is a well. It is not a, a fitting value, but it is a a very good estimate, uh, or it was a very good estimate in our uh, projects till now. So with all the data and uh, a couple of other uh, factors, we're going to create a, a roadmap for this project, and um, I think. What, have, what is good to keep in mind is to think about on the user in this phase um, and how is the, the process coverage. So that easy, uh, avoid that the user has to do some process steps in forms and then in Apex and then back in forms. It's always good if we find an area uh, which is covered then in Apex that uh, the user does not have to change too much between the applications. Let's show you another example of uh, of a project. It was done for quality uh, measurements on a on a construction site. It started with a PLC, um, and there, the situation, the the starting point was an Oracle Forms application with uh, the order for the quality checks, uh, reports, archiving system. Um, and on the construction side, 
uh, there have been taken some measurements. Uh, this is a static load plate. It controls a bit uh, how compacted is the soil. Um, the application is running in 11 uh, countries and around 1,000 users um, um, using that applications. Not all for this area, but, but uh, say in total. And the starting point was that the measurements have been done here on, on paper or registered on, on papers. Others um, had some, some Excel sheets. But in every country or every lab, they use a different Excel sheet uh, for, yeah, for registering the data. And after the measurements, uh, when they're back in the office or at home, they, um, yeah, we uh, re-register the data in the, in the Oracle Forms application. And the idea was uh, to build, yeah, to build a mobile application. Uh, which can be used in the, at the construction sites to register the data. And um, therefore, this is, uh, this is the applic application at all. And um, just showing the next slides, that was a bit how we transferred the, the forms application on, on a mobile device with uh, Oracle Apex. So this is some information about the, the instrument and then uh, comes up green to, to register the data of the measurements. And um, the good things we have also been able to um, integrate some additional features like a stopwatch uh, for the uh, registration of the data because they need a minimum of two minutes uh, uh, before they should enter the next value or to have a button to and the GPS coordinates of the of the measurements. So it is a lot of improved um, functionality with that um, use of the smartphones. Um, in the beginning, we also investigated the use of, of uh, tablets, uh, but it was decided from the customer they want to have the smartphones because all of their employees have a smartphone and uh, it's a bit more handy to use the smartphone instead of um, the tablets. Yeah, also, also graphics uh, or graphs or charts is, is no issue in Apex. It could be could be displayed, and this is also value added because uh, in in some cases they don't have the charts uh, in the Excel sheet, and uh, yeah, I can't see anything there. But the experts uh, know if it uh, is good or not good. <laughs> Say in easy words. Okay, yeah, one. <clears throat> Within this project, one additional requirement comes up, and that is that not all um, not all construction sites have a, a stable internet or um, mobile data, and they requested some some offline features to register the data. So Apex is um, normally it's not an offline tool because all pages are generated in database, but there is a feature built in with a, a progressive web app. Um, uh, allows you to install it on the smartphone and there's a service worker architecture included uh, which gives you basic functionality of offline pages normally just a screen that you're offline and can't work but with um, here we, we come back to the extension and we added some javascript um, to store the data on the smartphone in a called index db if you're offline and when you're online you sync the data uh, towards the central database so even even that was uh, good possible with with apex with some extensions the next step in this project is uh, yeah not to to type in the measurements but to use a, a electronic uh, device to get the uh, the measurements via Bluetooth uh, on the cell phone, and that is at the moment where, where we are working on. <clears throat> so, a bit to to lesson learned uh, from this project. Um, one thing is that you don't, you shouldn't forget to involve the the users or the key users. 
uh, often the management has not the, the details about the current processes and um, therefore I think it's good to record some processes to have interviews workshops or other formats to involve the key users um, <clears throat> so you find all information also about isolated applications or the, the workarounds with Excel um, if you don't do that um, we had also a project where we uh, just uh, saw in, in the rollout phase that uh, the application looks nice with Apex, but the user uh, still not uh, can can use it um, in total because not all requirements are in there. Well, have, having this process or uh, future uh, proven pro process. Um, it's it's easy to uh, compare it to the current application to write some user stories. Um, a nice thing with Apex is that uh, we have um, a couple of projects that work together with UX designers. Um, they typically uh, paint the screens in, in tools like Figma and it's uh, you can quite good um, take over these ideas with Apex and, and uh, build the design and, uh, uh, the, the theme um, like the UX designer uh, likes to do it. Also, when it comes to development, um, keep in mind it's it's really important and good to have uh, a team where forms knowledge is in, where Apex, HTML and JavaScript knowledge is in, um, where have also an understanding of the, of the business processes and you need a <clears throat> A product owner with his, uh, who is able to to prioritize and decide things and keep the contact with, uh, with the stakeholders. So a bit to the summary. Well, from our point of view, Apex is Oracle Apex is really a good development tool for data centric applications. And with Apex, for me, a couple of dreams come true, which I had as a forms developer. Um, the low coding framework allows us uh, to be quick in the development, but also the JavaScript extensions and the possibility to extend give us a good tool set to um, fulfill a lot of requirements. Um, it is really good to have this responsive design and the possibility to run Apex on mobile devices. Um, in the projects we had, it's, uh, a lot of ideas come up um, by just seeing the application on a mobile device for new extensions and new requirements. <clears throat> you don't need any any client signed uh, installation, so the the rollout is quite quite easy, and also for company external users, it's uh, easy to access a web application. The GUI, the GUI is uh, quite intuitive. Uh, we have modern elements. Um, we have grids, we have charts, we have a map integration. Though there's a lot, lot possible um, with a user interface for Apex. <clears throat> From the cost point of view, we don't need additional licenses. Oracle Apex comes with a database, especially on the mid tier. We don't need an um, application server license. We can use uh, a Tomcat server, which is also quite easy to install. It's, uh, you can't compare it with WebLogic. Um, so our Apex installation is really done in, in, in very, very short time. Yeah, there is from Oracle and it has also a very good integration to the Oracle database. Here SQL is so that the, the binding link between forms and Apex development. Um, it's also good for people uh, who, are, who knows PL SQL, they, they can yeah, jump in into Apex. You have to learn something about HTML and, and CSS and Apex. It's uh, it's not so easy as uh, some people tell, but it is good possible to um, to get 
into Apex and Peel SQL helps uh, there as a common language. And also you can use Peel SQL packages um, to transfer the business logic from forms and use it from both sides. Next to Oracle with uh, REST API calls, REST data sources, you can also access data outside an Oracle database, very good. And um, for offline capabilities, there is a, yeah, a, a basic support, um, I hope. And uh, we have also some, con we had also some contacts with the developer, uh, developers of Apex, they will spend um, some effort in that. I think some offline capabilities, sorry, my <laughs> um, would improve the uh, the tool. Um, so, sorry, my, my mouse was a bit flipping. Uh, okay. So let me give you two recommendations, just um, one is, uh, Forget about the past. Uh, look, look to Apex as, as it is now. Um, I think there have been a lot of improvements in the in the last years. When I saw the first Apex version, I was not sure if that tool um, can cover the requirements we have to a forms application. In the meantime, I'm I'm pretty sure um, for the most of forms applications that can be migrated to Apex or uh, it makes sense to add some functionality in Apex like dashboards, like uh, um, interactive reports. Um, so Apex has improved a lot also regarding the performance. And in the most cases, you have just one, one shoot or one chance. Uh, if you start a pilot with Apex, um, yeah, get people in who knows Apex. Uh, I've seen some customers who started with a trainee, who he should just create something in Apex. He was not familiar familiar with the data model, not familiar with Apex, and the result was also not not the best. And yeah, if the people in your company see well, Apex is not uh, so nice, then uh, normally the, it is hard to to restart a second uh, a second project with Apex. So if you want to get in contact with me, we, my company is uh, the IT Macher. Uh, we've, it's founded in 2016. We are working with uh, 30 experts uh, in the area of Oracle. Our uh, focus is uh, on Oracle Forms and Apex customers, so we are just Oracle based. And we we'll see some um, some heads of us, so we. We are not the youngest, but we have experience. <laughs> and so the last slide is, uh, well, thanks a lot for your attention. And um, now it's up for, for some questions, if you if you have. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> uh, there are no question in chat, no question in Q&A, but if people want to ask something, they can open their microphone and ask. Uh, if I mute them, maybe. Uh, okay, there is one question. Oh, that already disappeared. Uh, do you prefer using ORDS in standalone mode or Tomcat? I prefer the Tomcat solution. In, you. in, in our experience, it's uh, better performing. Than the chatty, uh, yeah, than the chatty implementation. Okay, that the the answer was what uh, what was expected. The same. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Other questions. You have the opportunity now to ask uh, the experts. Uh, Mirella, there is one under the Q and A's. Part. Okay, have a look. Uh, it's uh, thank you, thank you, Mark, okay. for the presentation. <laughs> oh, do you have some UX design recommendation for replacing a complex form user interface with Apex? 
Well, <laughs> hard to say without seeing the application. Um, yeah, we had a project where it was really a value added to involve some UX designers. They are so. I'm also more a developer, um, and sometimes I'm. I'm really. Um, it's really a great experience to see how a UX designer uh, designs the screens. Yeah? Um, they have different ideas, and we, are, we had a very good experience in that project with that involvement. The, the, I, I think that there is no easy answer. In general, if the forms is too complex, um, it's a good idea to uh, to uh, build it in several pages, not not all in one, because Apex is not pixel perfect. Yeah? You can uh, create a layout, um, but you don't have so much possibilities like like in forms to um, overfill it. <laughs> I hope that gives you an idea. <laughs> was not not a clear answer. I assume that uh, the start would would be with the with the discussion with the um, end user. Um, and you have to or it's good to convince them that uh, the way they did things for years uh, could be Mm, better and you can give them a, a better flow, a quicker flow and um, uh, try to redesign. Because some, yeah. indeed some some forms, some screen of forms are very, very rich with information and the end user it's already so well um, um, used with it that they can fill in with the, their eyes closed. Um, it's difficult to replace everything one to one to in, in Apex. And then I, I would say start with a discussion. And, and, and also Apex gives you the chance to build very quickly uh, some mock-ups yeah, to, to show them how it would look like uh, without, without all functionality uh programmed um, well you can use a mock-up tool but you also can use apex to um, create some some proposals and uh, yeah it, it is a every migration is a change process uh, uh, and um, not all people are uh, that easy for changes or uh, that willing to changes yeah there is another question how can we print or store more files on the local printer or hard drive without user interaction? This is not a problem with Web Toolkit from Forms. So print or store more files on the local printer or hard drive without user interaction. Okay, that, that's a tricky one. <laughs> yeah. um, I might ask, maybe my colleague is also in the call. Uh, Colin, are, are you in? Yes. Oh. Um, so, it, because Apex uh, web apps, um, it's not um, that easy to, um, without user interaction, to access the um, data system of the client. Um, so there are multiple possibilities. The, the, the easiest thing I think I think is um, to um, go over the server. So if you have a shared volume uh, in your um, environment, you could use this to um, drop data with PL SQL um, on the uh, on the database side in this shared volume, which also the user has on his device uh, to access. Um, uh, the data, and another possibility is um, to extend the um, Apex application uh, with some host application, uh, um, uh, which communicates via web sockets um, and uh, transport the data uh, via this link. But it's not um, like in forms where you can just say 
save it to the hard disk without user interaction. Yeah, that there's the security of the browsers yeah, who works a bit against uh, that in, in a web application. We have but another I, question. Yes, yeah, sorry. No, 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 sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, so thank you. I hope that the answer, it's, um, yeah, it's <laughs> what the, um, my colleague uh, wanted to hear. Another question. Do you use some automations of migration a form from forms into Apex, or it is not possible to have something like that. In other words, words has to be done the migration man manually. Yes, so we we do not use a tooling for the migration. In the in the past, so, uh, I think a couple of years ago, there was a kind of migration assistance in Apex uh, where at least. Uh, some information from the forms uh, files have to be yeah, um, filled in a repository which has been accessed by Apex, but also that um, well, the, the added value of this functionality was not very much. And so the Apex development team decided to get rid of this functionality. And from our point of view, it is really worse to go over the, uh, the screens and look um, what can be optimized uh, or, and how should it look in a modern application? Because with a, with a tooling, you have these uh, partly overfilled, over overfilled uh, screens and try to migrate it to another technology. Um, we don't see a big value, added value for that. Also, um, when you keep in mind, you want to run this application for the next, say, 10, to 20, 30 years, I don't know. <laughs> um, but that's the age of the forms application. And um, I think it is worth the effort to do it manually. What you can do is to create some kind of, of templates uh, where, where we start from to have a, um, a, a quicker start for if you have a lot of more or less identical um, screens to, to transfer. But I, I haven't seen a tool uh, where you press the button and then and, and come a good Apex application out of the box. I, I think it's not possible. Hello, this is Anne Sophie from Norway. I, I work in a project in Sweden, which is uh, made by Oracle Consulting. And then, unfortunately, did use a tool which they have. And you can understand the rubbish that if you have a lot of unused code, we also get a lot of unused code in Apex. And uh, yeah, so they had to delete a lot of stuff. It's really, really a disaster. And they use this in 23, the newest version of Apex. So I, I really would suggest not to do that anywhere, not use a tool because you don't, you don't get the effort from Oracle Apex because the, it's a lot of good effort. Uh, a lot of features you can use to, to make things uh, low code uh, because now we, we don't have no uh, low code. We have a lot of code, so it's. I really, really don't recommend to use a tool. Yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Another question: What software do you use to create PDF documents, like agreement invoices? It depends. <laughs> so <laughs> it depends a bit on the customer and and what is his future plan. Um, we have one application. Where where we have where the user want where the customer wants to stay in in in, in forms in a part and there we can uh, use also Oracle reports um, or we, we use the old Oracle reports to create PDFs. In another project, we um, build new stuff with with Jasper reports, which is also working pretty well to get out PDF reports. But um, it's a bit Java based. And um, another tool I would like to recommend is Apex Office Print, which is also um, pretty easy to use. And uh, it's, it's a good tool to create um, Excel documents, Word documents, or, or PDF documents. Thank you. Uh, there is a comment. Uh, if I get it right in the chat, the, actually there is no migration 
you have to look at the business logic and programming new from scratch. Yes, more or less that's the case. Yeah. Well, you you uh, you are reusing the business. If you had the application with the business logic in database, then it's yeah half of the work it's done, or more than half of the work. You are just have to do the the um, screens. If you don't have all the business logic in database, then you have to take it from forms probably and mm. put it in the database in packages. Yeah. Well, one of the core things when you think about um, um, the effort of a migration or uh, redevelop it in Apex, um, I think the key is that the database, uh, the data model is good. Uh, mm. So if you don't use foreign key constraints, if you don't use a, a normalized database, uh, um, then maybe it's not worth uh, the effort uh, to to make a new front end on this database. So. I think that is pretty much the first decision. How good is my data model? And uh, if it is good, then it's really worth the effort uh, to design new screens and build a new front end to this database. And you get really all the quick wins out of this migration. OK, something, no. Uh, any other question? If you have another question, please write it in the next minute. Otherwise, we will close the, the session. Um, some people are had to uh, leave earlier, so they just saying thank you. It, there was an interesting session. Yes, thank you, Mark. It was an interesting session. Yeah, thank you so much for joining. <laughs> <I'm> happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nothing, no other question. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, the session has been uh, recorded. I will send uh, the link to the recording as soon as I upload the um, session on uh, the YouTube channel. I will send you by email. Uh, thank you everyone for staying with us this afternoon or morning if you are from the other side of the pond. Uh, Mark, again, many thanks for um, um, having time to come and um, uh, share from your experience. <clears throat> um, hopefully, uh, we will meet you again in the future. Who knows? <laughs> and uh, have a nice evening, everyone. Um, have a happy holidays because it's, it's coming. Uh, and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much and uh, don't hesitate if you have a question just give me a mail or, or uh, contact me no no issue thank you have a good time thank you thank you you too thank you bye 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 bye